it is uh, certainly disappointing um, to play the way that we did tonight, to come out to a game that uh, I think it's so much is built up and you talk about in the rivalry game and you come out here and I thought we really had a good week of practice and come, to come out here and make some of the mistakes that we did as a football team with some of the uncontested deep balls that we gave up defensively uh, and some of the turnovers uh, that we had tonight were, were frustrating, you know, as football coach coming out here. I felt like this was a game that we could be competitive in. I thought this was a game that we had an opportunity, a great opportunity to maybe correct some things that went wrong earlier in the season or some of the close football games that we lost. Uh, we just, we weren't able, we weren't able to get it done as a football team. We came out here, I thought, for the most part, there were an awful lot of players that competed. But again, I, I thought that Bobby and Matt as two young guys coming into a football game, competed hard, but I don't think we played very well around them uh, on the offensive side of the ball as far as receivers and making some plays and picking up some of that burden that we talked about, that BJ were, some of that total yards that BJ was walking out with. Uh, and I thought on defense, our our pass secondary was, was poor. I thought it was poor. Um, I just thought there was way too many uncontested uh, deep balls where the ball wasn't contested. It's one thing when the ball goes up uh, and they jump up over you, the catch the young man made in the fourth quarter, the diving catch down there on our sideline. Uh, I'll take those. I'll, I'll give up those deep balls. That was a great individual effort and a great play. But some of the other ones are just uncontested and totally uncalled for as a defense. Well, you you look like they were lower backs, backs and why did you start with I started with Bobby. We said we were going to let the quarterbacks compete during the course of the week. Bobby clearly won the uh, competition during the week. I say clearly. I mean, it was like uh, did had a higher completion percentage, put the ball in danger less, threw less interceptions, uh, had less accuracies, made better. I mean, better reads. Just we let him compete for two weeks uh, on the field. And one of the reasons that. Uh, I wanted those two both to compete, both to, to get ready like they were starting the game. Uh, we made the decision earlier that we would play the quarterback that gave us the best chance to win. And statistically and from a leadership and experience standpoint, we felt like that was Bobby Eveld coming in. You know, um, I know it's easy to second guess and look back, especially with what happened and say it was wrong. I'm sick. Uh, I just absolutely hate it for Bobby. It's probably the worst case scenario you could have built when you made the decision, not necessarily the win or the loss, but him getting injured in this game is probably the worst case scenario uh, that you could build, and unfortunately, it happened tonight. But as I told Bobby, we're not going to make this decision in hindsight. I think it's going to be easy for a lot of people to make it tonight. Uh, once the game is over and looking at how things unfolded. But we made the decision we felt gave this football team uh, the best opportunity to win coming in and the senior class. I just I hate how it worked out for everyone involved, especially especially Bobby. What, what injury is it? What's the injury? It's a left shoulder. Uh, I don't know at this point the magnitude, uh, the separation, one, two, or three, but it's a left shoulder. How, so much, of a, how much of a disruption was it losing him at that point that early? Well, I mean, that's one of the reasons that I talked about both quarterbacks prepared for two weeks to get ready as the starter for this game. And Matt went in, and I thought, really, I thought outside of the one interception he threw when he hit the linebacker in the sternum, um, outside of that one, I, I thought, you know, he threw the deep ball that was an interception down in the end zone. But outside of that, uh, I thought he showed courage. I thought he showed toughness. I thought he stood in the pocket. I thought he threw the ball very well. And... Honestly, I don't think that we got a whole lot of help. I don't think he got a whole lot of help at receiver tonight. You know, I mean, with his numbers being whatever they were, and I think uh, he got exactly what was thrown for because it's not like we broke a lot of tackles tonight, made extra yards, or went and made a circus catch for him. I mean, most of that he earned. Talk a little bit about the confidence just before halftime. Before so, yeah. Why you're taking the field? Okay, um, two things. I mean, one, my thought process at the very end of the half. Uh, was to tempo them. One of the things going to the line real quick and running the play, 
you know, we went up there, it took us 22 seconds to run the play. It wasn't what I had in mind. I mean, we were trying to call the play, go to the line, and snap it real quick so we didn't have to go to a goal line or a big set and also not give them the opportunity to dial up some of the blitzes they were doing because as soon as Matt went back in the game, they started coming hard, blitzing after us. And I was trying to go tempo. Uh, that's why I didn't call timeout. Looking at it, I looked up. There's 22 seconds. I thought we could run the play, have a chance to call timeout and run another play and kick a field goal. Uh, hindsight, that one's on me. I take responsibility and blame. At the end of the half, I should have called timeout. A young quarterback in play, that's what I should have done. I don't think that was the difference in the game. Uh, but that was definitely, that's my, that is, that one is on me. But I'm telling you what my thought process was. I knew I had three timeouts, uh, but I also didn't want to give them a chance to dial up some of the things they were bringing to the young quarterback. At the end of the game, I was kicking field goals because I think in the fourth quarter, this game was pretty much out of reach. Uh, at that point, even though we were driving down the field and getting some chunks of yardage, but I think we needed to build on some successes, and I think it was really important for this young football team uh, full of sophomores and freshmen. I mean, you're talking about on the offensive line, I'm trying to think, I believe there were two seniors that, that, that really played tonight. Um, a significant amount, and that was the you know the running back and the and the receiver. But with all the sophomores and freshmen on this team, I felt like it was really important that we got something positive out of the last couple drives. I thought going for a fourth and seven and dragging our tails off the field with no points and a lot of yards to show for it was not the answer. I think what we were doing in the fourth quarter was building a lot of young players for Cincinnati next week and Pittsburgh the week after that and trying to build some confidence in a football team that obviously didn't have a lot of other reason to have it tonight. And that's why I felt like it was really important that we were able to get points and not walk off the field at fourth and seven. The fourth and one, I went for it. You know, the fourth and seven, I, I, I didn't. I, I felt like the field goals were important. What was going on in the defensive backfield from your perspective? Because it looked like they were mixed up, I mean, just really bad on a couple of those long just guys I don't think it looked, I don't think it looked that good. I mean, I thought it was I thought it was poor. I thought it was bad. What was going on? I don't know. I asked, we're in a deep zone. I asked one of the players, I said, why did you come out of your zone? He said, I saw the guy run a route underneath, and I jumped him. It's, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to have to watch a film and get some explanations. You know, the next call is on. You don't get an opportunity to get a lot of answers, you know what I mean, because the game is rolling. So I can't tell you. We tried to play a lot of different players in our back end. We tried to play a lot of different guys back there. Um, but it was, it, was, it was a very poor display of secondary, secondary, secondary play. I wish I had an excuse. I wish I had a reason. I wish I could tell you why it was as bad as it was. But, but right now I can't, but we got a bunch of film and get some answers. Yes, sir? I was asking the same thing, but in terms of the momentum, obviously the defense had stepped up against Connecticut. Is this just back to where things were before Connecticut? Right you no, know, I, I thought our front seven really actually did a pretty good job against the run. When you look at the explosiveness that they have in the running game, I thought the defensive front, front seven really uh, played pretty well. And even going in at halftime, we had three turnovers at halftime, and you're down points, but the total yards were 205 to 190, you know, 208 to 195. It's a very balanced football game at halftime, even with the three mistakes and you're down. And I felt like we had a chance even going into the second half until we jump off sides and play three deep and they run an uncontested deep ball for, what, 89 yards? How many yards did that one go for? Uh, as many as they had to go to get to the goal line. I mean, but it was a long way. And that kind of, I mean, right there, I mean, I felt like it was a pretty evenly played football game, even though the points were a little bit swayed because of the turnovers. Um, I felt like there was, we still were very competitive in it, but from there it certainly went south in the past defense. I, I know.